She is an infectious disease specialist from UT Health San Antonio, and we are very pleased to have her on a regular basis. Dr. Ruth Bergeron joined us in this case at Q&A. Dr. Bergeron, we've been getting a lot of questions as it seems as if the cases start to rise. We get more people asking questions about what's going on with COVID and particular drugs that they or someone they know or something they've read on the Internet. Uh, and, and one of them is Paxlovid. There have been people who are who are concerned that you know, they take it and then it doesn't, you know, when they get off, they still have COVID. I mean, clear up some of the misunderstandings here when it comes to that particular drug, Paxlovid. Sure, absolutely. I've been prescribing it quite a bit these days because there's a lot of COVID circulating in the community. And I want to remind everybody that the efficacy of this drug is really impressive. If you take Paxlovid within the first five days of getting COVID symptoms, and that's an important point, you got to take it early. You got to take it within the first five days. If you do that, you have an 89% reduction in your risk of going to the hospital or your risk of dying. So that is a huge improvement over what we had before. Now, what happens? You get, you get your symptoms, you get your test, you test positive, you start your Paxlovid within five days. You don't wait too long. Um, after five days of taking Paxlovid, are you going to feel perfect? Well, you might not. Just as with a common cold, um, remember the days when we used to get common colds? Well, mm -hmm. it would be pretty common for people to continue to have some cough, that nighttime irritating cough that can linger on for weeks. That. If that happens after Paxlovid for someone with COVID, that doesn't mean that the Paxlovid didn't work. It means that your body is still working to recover from the insult and the inflammation that the initial viral infection caused. So it's very unlikely that these people that are calling in and saying, I still have COVID, it's unlikely that they still have the disease COVID-19. They probably have post-viral bronchitis. Alternatively, these could be people who waited too long and they didn't get the Paxlovid until beyond five days. So, you know, we're not in the middle of a surge, certainly, but cases are increasing here locally. And last time we talked to you, the positivity rate was up. So give us a picture of where we are right now in terms of the spread of COVID at the moment. Right. I think the last time I spoke to you all, we were at about 5.2 percent. We've gone up uh, to 9.7. We're almost above that 10 percent community positivity rate, which is not a real great place to be in. And what that means is uh, really people should be putting their masks on when they go to crowded indoor places. Um, when you go to the grocery store, um, when you go to uh, houses of worship, if you're going to concerts, if you're going to meetings at work, wear your mask, wear a good surgical mask, because even though COVID isn't filling up our hospitals, it isn't killing people like it was before, it's no fun to get COVID. So we really need to double down on the hand washing, the masking, and the staying six feet apart from other people. And you know what else we need to double down on? We need to double down on getting boosted. So there's a whole lot of San Antonians that did not get their booster shot to begin with. And we know that a lot of people over the age of 50 are due for a fourth shot. And now is a really good time to go out and get that fourth shot if you are over the age of 50. That leads into my next question, which comes from my own house. And actually, my wife and I had this discussion about when to get boosted. And should you stretch it? Like instead of the four months that's recommended, should you wait an extra month or two to see if you can get more, you know, effectiveness as it heads into the winter time? Well, that is uh, an idea that I didn't think was such a bad idea a month or so ago, uh, or when the first boosting recommendations came out. But at that time, if you recall, Steve, our community positivity rates were super, super low. And now we've seen them rise. Um, first they doubled and then they doubled again. So I don't recommend stretching it out. I recommend that if you are in the eligible group to get either your third shot or your fourth shot, I wouldn't stretch it out. I'd go ahead and get it. Memorial Day is coming up. People want to get together. The holidays are coming up. People are going to want to travel. So go and get your booster before you travel because it could really spare you an unpleasant episode of COVID-19.
So what about people who are not in that recommended group? If you're under 50, especially now we know that kids 5 to 11 can get a booster. When should that group that is not already being given the recommendation consider a booster shot? Sure. Well, anybody, um, including the five and ups, um, can get a third shot or, or what we, we are calling it a booster shot if they weren't immunocompromised. That booster shot can happen as soon as five months after your primary series. And so that's something that just came out today. Um, the uh, CDC, I think uh, Rochelle Walensky hasn't yet signed off on it, but the Advisory Council on Immunization Practices is recommending that children over five can be boosted five months after their primary series. Great advice there, because I know there are a lot of parents out there that are wondering about this whole thing. Are we seeing any of the sub variants that we've been talking about uh, in different places? I mean, uh, uh, is it mainly Omicron and sub variants? There's not anything else that we need to necessarily worry about. So far as we know, that is the case. You know, with this lull that we've had, Steve and Myra, there haven't been super regular meetings to talk about the very latest percentages of this subvariant and that subvariant. Um, but we have not been hearing in our infectious disease circles about anything other than Omicron. And, you know, we will expect these subvariants of Omicron that we heard about elsewhere, the BA4, the BA5, um, we will expect them to gradually um, be present. But we haven't heard about anything beyond those. And we aren't seeing more lethal disease. We're seeing more infectious, more easily transmissible infections, but we're not seeing people having more severe cases. But of course, we are approaching that 10% positivity rate, which may not be top of mind for a lot of people. So things to keep in mind, of course, as you mentioned, with the masking, hand washing, social distancing, we know the drill. Dr. Yeah. Ruth Bergeron, thanks so much for your time. Most welcome. Good to be with you. Take care.